righty. A little bit of a country night. Yes. That's okay. I don't mind. <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome to the Studying Brew episode 697 for this beautiful Monday evening. Well, we're going to have Kona catchphrase. We're going to teach you uh we're going to teach you a thing or two. No, we're going to teach phrase that pays. The phrase that pays. This is the game show. <laughs> it's the game show that's sweeping the nation. It's where we show you how to catch those key phrases, those key words, those key connections in a fun game and we call it the Kona catchphrase. It's it's the techniques, it's the skill set you want to take into every exam. It's the tech, you know, it's it's that nice, you know, bit of skills you want to have in your arsenal before you walk into exam, you want to be approaching these adult exams the same way you've been doing it since you were, I don't know, since elementary school. Some of us since the 1900s, we're in a new, we're in a new era. New. We're in the 2023 era and we know how to have a new approach. It's a, it's a winning approach. It, it helps definitely get those pass notices. So it's great. It's great for you to know these things and understand it. I will say this, guys, you know, um, if you guys remember taking multiple choice tests, you know, like you, you'd be going through there and you go, man, it hasn't, it's been a minute since I hit B. So I'm going to hit B. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, or spell abacadabba. <laughs> a. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. My name is Andy. I'm the guy that's telling you not to spell abacadabba on your uh, multiple choice exams. Yep. But you're not here for, obviously, you're not here for my great advice like that. But you're here for Brandy. She's got her Series 6, 63, 26, Series 65, and her Series 7. You definitely want to listen to her when it comes to these exams and how to fill it out properly and approach these exams because she's more than qualified to teach you all the things you need to know. So that way you, too, can get that pass notice. Uh, we had a great weekend. Yes. We had a great weekend, folks. Uh, you know, it's always a great weekend when you're vertical and uh, you got your mind about you and your health and everybody around you is uh, present and accounted for. True. Uh, so thank thank God for all that. And we're definitely we're having a good one. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how chaotic it gets, yes. you have to always count your blessings all the time, all the time, all the time. And I'm going to say this to y'all. Listen, a lot of you wait for an opportunity to do something. You wait for the perfect moment. You wait for the clearing in the storm. You wait for that moment to where I guess it's like, uh, I don't know, like it's uh, some sort of like predestined thing where, you know, divine inter lines up. I would say like divine intervention almost. You wait for the clouds to part and that golden ray to hit your face and, and to instruct you to, to, move, to, to do exactly what you need to be doing yes. in whatever direction that is. It doesn't happen that way. In fact, if you want to level up in everything that you do and you want to level up in the world, mm -hmm. this is what I've learned and what I've read and, and in certain really, really, I mean, I used to build race cars and, and stuff like that. I think I've talked about that before and I used to build some for, from pretty prominent people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I don't want to, I'm not going to do the name drop thing, but pretty dang prominent. Brandy would tell you and she'd be like, yeah, you probably think I was lying, but no, it's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But one of the things that they've always told me or I've learned and I read, and this is what I've come to the conclusion, is if you really want to level up, everybody, this is what you got to learn how to do. This is the trick you got to learn. You got to learn to operate in chaos. Oh, 1000 percent. You have to learn to hop operate in chaos. You have to be able to understand when major problems happen. They're just scratches to you. They're just scratches to the surface. If something crazy happens, right? Let's just say, I don't know. Someone, uh, I don't know, robs your house. Someone, you know, something, something really devastating, right? Right. The way you operate in chaos is you still go about your business and you work on a solution. You don't think about the problem. You think about working on the solution. And when you can think about working on the solution and you get stopped worrying about the problems and you start operating in chaos, everything in the world throws at you is literally Disneyland. That is true. Everything is Disneyland at that point. Because there is no, there's no harming you because there's, that's how you operate. You're used to it. 
So instead of waiting for that ordained moment, realize there is no moment and that do are going to learn how to swim and in, in the in the in the stormy waters. I, I had the perfect quote and I can't find it. And it was exactly what you just said. Like successful people don't wait for the perfect moment. No. Because there is no perfect moment. No, it's all a myth. It's right there with the Loch Ness. It's right there with a lot of things. Exactly. In case there's children on here, I'm not going to say things, but Loch Ness Monster, we'll put it with that. Yeah. Maybe the Chupacabra. Maybe the Sasquatch, right? <laughs> Apparently you can make TV shows about finding Sasquatch and be pretty pretty uh, successful at getting paid for that and uh, actually just chase a, a mythical beast. <laughs> Hey, I ain't hating on their hustle. But all right, everybody, if you want to get on our studying and you want to get more, listen, this is our, just our sample. This is our this is our rally at night. This is where we get together. We huddle. We have a study session. We're going to teach you some techniques. We're going to show you how to do some stuff. And we get your mind set for the next day. Yes. For the next day. Yes. And the next day. Yes. Because let me tell you, man, you got to take time to regroup. You got to take time to recenter yourself every day. You got to take time to get yourself in order for the next battle. Because if you don't, you're not going to be ready. True. You're not going to be ready. That's true. You're going to be tired, wore down. And and the worst part, you'll have no direction. All right. You don't want to be directionless. You want to know exactly what you want to do and what you want to get. And we put the studying brew together so that way people have a place to go at night to get like a routine going, a consistency, teach them a few things. But more importantly, we're in your face every, you know, four days out of the week. That's right. You know what I mean? For members, we're in there almost seven days a week. We only take Saturday off. That's true. But we're seriously all the time. And that's how we build success through consistency, through routine, through habit, and just being immersed. Some people tell me, they're like, Andy, you know, some of the things I just feel like you guys just got too much. You just got too much. And sometimes I feel like we don't have enough. I agree. Because you're asking, a lot of people ask to get this done in a very short amount of time. Yep. If you want to get something done in a short amount of time, you have to be obsessed with it. Tenacious. You're going to have to show that tenacity. You're going to have to be persistent. You're going to have to be immersed in it. It is going to have to be consuming. You're going to have to eat, sleep, and drink it. That's true. If you want to do it. Mm -hmm. And especially if you want to do it in a short amount of time. That's very true. It has to be that way. But the good news is it's only for a short amount of time. Yeah. And the greater news is once you learn and unlock that it's that's what you can do, in a short amount of time, if that's all you need to do, you start applying it to everything. Yes. And then just watch what happens. It's amazing. So if you want to get into more of our paid program, all the things we have during the day, our lives, our replays, our library, our Discord, our community, get our study guides, all that great stuff. And you want to know more about how we operate, watch that orientation replay. It explains everything we do all the paid, all the free, all the things that we have to offer. Watch that thing, scan the QR code, hit the link tree in the chat, check out what we have going on, and it's all there. In fact, we got new sweatpants in the store. Side note for uh, it's uh, women's sweatpants. We have the keep your PMA sweats. Heck yeah. Uh, check that out even in our store. All right. Anyways, that's in the link tree. Yes. All right, everybody. And we also have the Telegram. Sorry. We have the reminders. You can catch up with us. You can also reach me over there. But the best way to reach me is 866-ACONA, 866-439-562. If you have any questions, send me a text or a voicemail. Let me know who you are. I know this is crazy, but this phone service thingy that I run my business through, it's just an app and it does not give me caller ID to anybody who uh, texts me. And I hate to break all your hearts, but I don't add all of you to my contacts. I'm just saying, I would have a very big contact. If I was doing a Rolodex, it'd be the size of a car by now. So just let me know and say, hey, this is your good friend, Gene Quarterman. Yes. Giving you a, a call. Uh, can you get back to me? No problem, Gene. Yes. And I know who I'm talking to. It's wonderful. It is nice. It's wonderful. So please let me know who you are. Uh, sometimes just people come go, get, get right after it. Right. And I'm like, I don't, I don't even know how to address you. <laughs> Hi, you. You. 
yeah. it, them, they, she, he, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Buddy. Just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer names. Yes. All right. And then Brandy is on the Discord. She's on that Kona community. So join up on that Discord. We'll be uh, featuring that on Wednesday. Uh, it is the only thing we're doing on Wednesday on the evening side. Yeah. Uh, because if you haven't heard, I don't know if Brandy has a slide for that. Not yet, no. But Wednesday, uh, there will be no member live sessions or small group tutoring. Uh, they're they're doing uh, fire prevention in our area and they're taking down our power lines and redoing some stuff so that way we, we don't have a lot of wildfire uh, issues with our power lines. So I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but California has got a thing with wildfires, yeah. with wind and power lines. So in rural areas. Yeah, we're, we hit on all those, Everyone. every single one of those key things. We're in a rural area. We have lots of wind. Usually it's very dry and there's power lines. So Correct. we got to, they're going to re up, they're going to update all that stuff. So we're going to lose power on Wednesday. Is it an inconvenience? Yes. But in the long run, I'd rather them do that instead of losing my house. At least we know the power outage is happening because otherwise it would be like all of a sudden up, 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 up. We'll still be working. So uh, make sure to message us on that discord. So make sure to be on there yeah. as always. All right, and then uh, we got live session reminder for tomorrow for the SIE, the 26, and the Series 65. We're going to have a great one tomorrow. SIE, we are going to go over stocks versus bonds. Stocks and bonds. We have a new uh, guide that's going to be out too. Ooh, Brandy's going to debut a new guide. A new quick guide. Debut, a quick a deb guide. That's right. Debut. Woo! We have an options quick guide. We have a... Uh, bulls and bears and orders one. Oh my oh my yeah we've got we've got quite a few actually but this one's going to be for stocks and bonds, bonds. Yeah. so you want to be on there for that 7 a.m in hawaii 10 a.m pacific 11 a.m mountain 12 p.m central 1 p.m in the east series 26 we're going over market structure and market participants a lot of marketing there <laughs> You know, it's the the industry, basically. Yeah, exactly. The industry, the, the one you're studying for. Right. Uh, that's at 9 a.m. in Hawaii, 12 p.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Mountain, 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. in the East. Series 6 will be content recording. We're going to go over regulation BI and suitability rules. This is a good one. Uh, that's great. As you can be in that, try to be in there. Uh, as always, members have access to all the live sessions. It's simply the Zoom code for all members uh, for the April and just go ahead and just be in there. Uh, and if it's not your exam, that's okay. Just put an earpiece in, just listen. Take light notes, eventually you will be there. Right. Uh, and that's just something that follows you everywhere anyway. It so does, actually. might as well. That's right. Series six, 1 p.m. in Hawaii, 4 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. in the East. And I guess we'll see you there, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, no workshops this weekend, but I want to say uh, thank you to all the people that showed up for our workshop on Saturday. It was a great success. Yes, it was. We had some great questions on there, and uh, they weren't. They, and I think we learned some uh, some techniques. Yes, we did. So we had a pretty good turnout. And again, if we ever do another techniques workshop, which will be not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, which will be the first week of May. Six. May six. May 6th. May 6th. First weekend of May. So, yeah, we'll do it then. Uh, anybody can come. It's the same Zoom code, and it's free. So just so you know. So that if anybody wants to catch one of those, we'll be doing it again in two weeks. Yeah. All right. Let's get after Brandy. Let's go. Yeah. It is Kona Catchphrase Night. Yeah. You're like, I'm brand new. I don't understand any of this. Oh, you're in special luck tonight. It is fun. You're in great luck tonight. If you don't know nothing about nothing, nothing. You just know that someone told you to be on here. You're like, oh, I'm going to maybe start this thing. I hope I can catch up with day one. Well, we don't do stuff like that around here because every day is day one. That's right. It's not one day. It's day one. Or day one. And so tonight we're going to have a great one. We are going to have some questions. And guess what? Brandy picked out questions where you don't even have to know anything about securities. Nope. Nothing. You don't have to know anything about securities. In fact, if you know about securities, it might even hinder you because that's the whole point of today is to stop focusing on content. Let's look at the words. And some people are like, what? Is that like that on the exam? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen, because the test prepares know that you can't get out of your own head. 
and they throw things in there. They throw monkey wrenches at you all the time yeah, they do. because they know you can't help yourself to overthink and second guess the obvious question answer that you should have just clicked B, but then you overthought it and click C because that's just how you do. That's it. So tonight we're going to take a look at that. So how do we play Kona catchphrase? It's simple. I'm going to read the answers first because that's how we do over here at Kona. We read answers first all the time because it always gives us a clear clear vision on how where the question is going. We read the questions with intent at that point, and we stop reading them nine times, seven times, six times, four times. If you're an overreader of a question, you need to switch it up and start reading your answers first. It'll help you out with that. So we do that first. The people, ladies and gentlemen, we need your help in the chat. You're going to simply put what you think are the key words to getting this answer right. What are the key words in the answers? You're going to put that in the chat. There is no wrong that you could put in there. And then you're going to simply put the same thing when I read the question. Don't try to put the answers right away. Don't try to answer it. But look for those keywords. See if you're really seeing what Brandy sees. See if you line up with what exactly she was pointing out. That's how you get better at a skill. See how you match up. Let's play. Let's, Let's go. Do it. All right. D, broker dealer. C, dollar broker. Uh, C, two dollar broker. Sorry. I didn't want to jip him a dollar. I... <laughs> B, transfer agent. A, designated market maker specialist. <laughs> Pardon me. I don't know if you noticed this, but I am not the dollar broker. I am the two dollar. I, I, I saw this answer and I was like, I have a raise, sir. I was like, is this like, what, what was, what's that wine that they call two buck Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hmm. Someone put specialist in the chat. Yes. What else have we got? What else have we noticed here? You can also notice patterns. Anything that we've seen from Saturday, all those little things that we've tried to do. Broker dealer, broker dealer. Uh, can I, can I kind of lead this way? This one? Because it's like the first one. Yeah. I, I want to show you guys what I mean. Okay. Um, broker dealer, right? I'm assuming it's some sort of business, right? To be like a real estate broker or a car dealership, you're a business. Yeah. I mean, if you're a broker dealer, it means you own the structure and you uh, you deal it too. Right. Exactly. Now, $2 broker, I, uh, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I only deal in Jefferson's. Exactly. $2 more broker. <laughs> Exactly. You only have two bucks, dude. What's up? Transfer agent. I feel like there's some sort of transferring, um, maybe some like exchange or changes, something happening because it's transfer, mm -hmm. right? And then market a designated market maker specialist. Well, first of all, the word specialist and designated yep. kind of mean the same thing, right? You're you're specialized in that one area, right? Exactly. And I'm it, at the exhaust specialist. It, right. They're specialized in exhaust. Their designation is exhaust only. Exactly. Right. And then market maker, right? Means like I'm I'm assuming there's some market making. Yeah. Whatever that means. So you guys see what I just did there? None of that is securities works that I just said. When I hear market making, am I the only one who gets Fiddler on the Roof? Uh, what's that song? Uh, matchmaker, Make Me a Match. I don't know why. I always get that in my head. I don't know. I, I think of crafts. It might just be me. I just think of crafts. <laughs> Has nothing to do with it. There's no association like, other than that. I get like, that in You know my how head. They, they, they say like they're um, basket making or they're oh, yeah. market making. All right. Yeah. Because I have not seen Fiddler. I know. It's a good one. Guys. Oh, you read. Right. You are a New York Stock Exchange member who makes a market in a specific stock and maintains an orderly market for the shares of that stock is considered a. What are the words in the question, guys? Words in the question. Words in the question. Words, words in, the question. in the question. Words in the question. Don't put answers. There you go. Market specific. Specific. There you go. Also. Specific makes a market. That I mean. Could it not point directly to A? Now, if we're honest with ourselves, some of you would have got that wrong because you would have overcomplicated it. Yes. That's why this exercise is so vital if you're an overthinker. Or one of my favorites, because I married that, that person, which is the ADD, overexcited, skip all the words, and just uh, goes way too fast. Brandy was a way, go way too fast person. I was a word skipper. Yes. Call me Skippy. Slow it, <laughs> Slow it down. 
slow down to go fast. That's right. All right, here we go. D, 20 shares of XYZ and a cash equivalent to 5% of the value of the spinoff. 20 shares of XYZ and 11 shares of the spinoff. 10 shares of XYZ and 10 shares of the spinoff. 20 shares of XYZ and 10 shares of the spinoff. Hmm. hmm. Definitely numbers. <laughs> I love that. So it's all numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm going to say, I mean, no, no one's putting it there, but it's obvious. I mean, I feel A and B, it's almost transposed on the shares and the, in the, you know, the different. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody put C. Spin off. 320s, 110. There you go. Dun, 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 dun. 320s and 10. Uh, so can I say this uh, to the person who put spin off question mark? Mm, yes that could be a focus but at the same time every, uh, every single one of them has it has the word spinoff because again we're not approaching it from a content standpoint just looking at the words is it like all in the family and then jefferson's was a spinoff yeah legit yes that's exactly what it is it's its own show right that's that only like only certain people in this whole it is whole know what i'm talking about yeah, no but i was gonna think it's like yeah, no. <laughs> All right. You guys ready for the questions? Yes. XYZ Corporation announces a 10% stock dividend followed by a 5% spinoff of a subsidiary business. A customer who owns 200 shares of XYZ will receive. XYZ Corporation announces a 10% stock dividend followed by a 5% spinoff. Of a subsidiary business, a customer who owns 200 shares of XYZ will will receive 200. Ten and five percent. Ten, twenty, ten. We have a lot of twenty, ten, huh? Okay. So you're highlighting the numbers. I'm highlighting the numbers, and then. Guys, there's a word in here that literally makes... It's the key to everything. It's literally the key to everything. It is a two... Receive? Word. Nope. Not receive. It is a two... It's two words. Yes. And they're right next to each other. It's been off. No. No. Stop no. No. There you go. There he is. Got it. Followed by... Guys, it's essential to know the followed by because what happens is, guys, what's 10% of 200? That has to have a two in it, right? 20. Okay. Has to have a two in it. Yeah. Now, this important word right here, followed by, means then after I do the 220, because that's where we get the 20 extra shares, then I do the 5%. Then I do the 5%. Because I'm doing the 5% after I add that. 10%. It can't be any of this. That means it has to be because of this one word. I mean, two words because of those two words, guys, that is the answer. That's the answer because of those two words. Now, let me say this because we were talking about a stock dividend followed by um, a 5% of a, of a, that's not cash. We're talking the this is like a grammar thing. We're talking about stocks. So that's why it's not the cash. But the important thing is, guys, is I saw this thing. And I saw about, I saw this somewhere else. And I saw Oh, about, this is that question you saw somewhere else? Oh yeah. Saw about 20 questions of people going, well, that's not on the SIE. So I don't need to know that. What the heck is a spinoff? Nope. Don't worry about this question. This is too deep. And I'm like, dude, you guys are missing. The obvious A and C are opposite of each other and followed by followed by was everything followed by meant everything because that's what tipped off the 11. By the way, there was somebody on here that pointed out that 11 shares was the first thing that that person saw. Boom. There you go. See guys, you didn't need to know what a spinoff was. You really didn't even know what a stock dividend was. All you had to do was slow down and look at the keyword followed by. 
and that's how you got yeah because if you're content focused you missed everything you'll miss everything on this because there's no spinoff in anybody's content on any of it no yeah. content out there has spinoff no we define it the kona videos have it defined but that's it you never see it in another quiz question so there you go I love that one. Focus on the words. I saw that and I was like, dude, everybody's missing the point. It's a follow by 20 comments. D is sold. C is assigned. B is exercised. A is worthless. Worthless. That's harsh. I know. Whoa. It has no value. Worthless. Brandy, by the way, if you didn't know this, Brandy trolls other people's <laughs> Facebooks. And trolls other people that are tutors. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm all, what are they saying over there? It's hilarious. She does it for fun. She doesn't actually ever really answer except that one time. Oh my gosh. Sometimes every once in a while, I'll be like, what are you doing? What is everybody on this thing doing? Including the tutor. I'm all, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing right now? All right. I think we got enough. That's it. That's all we needed. Yeah. All right. So. An option that is not in the money at expiration. I don't know what to tell you guys if you don't get this one. But what are the key words in the question? What are the key words in the question? Not in the money. Exactly. That is it right there. So if I'm not in, that means I have what Andy said. What did I say, guys? What did I say? Right? He said worthless means you have zero value. Have you guys ever heard that song? We're in the money. We're in the money. Yeah. So yeah. if I'm not in the money, that there's means... no song for that. Well, actually, there's a lot of country songs about not being in the money. Sorry. <laughs> there's quite true. a few blues songs too. That's very true. Uh, but you get my point. Yes. No value. Exactly. No value. Because I'm not in. There's no value to those. I'm not lines. in, so I'm out. Right there. I like that. I'm not in, so I'm out. <laughs> All right. D, the disclosure obligation. C, the compliance obligation. B, the care obligation. A, the conflict of interest obligation. What do the disclose say to you? Disclose, right? Yeah. It's going to be some kind of disclosing. Yeah. Conflict of interest. Disclosing conflict of interest. It means there's some sort of conflict. Right. I, I know that that sounds kind of elementary, guys, but I'm I'm not like I'm not joking, kind of. Um the care, care obligation. To... Doesn't care sound like I have to care? <laughs> yeah. Like the care bear stare. Like I have to care, right? Yeah, that's probably the first part of caring is you have to actually care. <laughs> Sorry, here at No Care, right? we care. Exactly. and then, <laughs> That's not a real good marketing strategy. Exactly. And then compliance means you got to follow the rules, right? Here at the No Care Care facility, <laughs> we take the highest. Highest level of care. We take the highest level of no care for your care. Guys, <laughs> do we need to know content for this? No, nah, I don't think so. Okay. Let's read that question. Which part of the regulation best interest has three components resembling FINRA's three suitability obligations. So I know that somebody who has already studied this, put that in the chat of what it is, but we definitely have the words best interest. Mm -hmm. And there's one other word that I felt matched one of the words in the answer choices. Just in case you didn't know. What best <laughs> Someone's going meant. obligation. There you go. <laughs> I know. Obligation. <laughs> I know. I saw that too. And I was like, obligation. Right. Suitability. Right. Guys, if you're if you're doing what's in the best interest of the client and you're doing suitable stuff, don't that doesn't that mean you have to take care? It is. You're doing what's suitable for them. You're caring for them. Boom. Did we have to know that the care obligation had the three components? Because guys, I can guarantee you. Most of you started with that. I don't know which one of these has three components. Not the important part of this question. The important part of the question was suitability. Suitable and best interest. Best interest and suitable. 
that's the person who's caring for you. And you didn't even need to know that it had three parts. So, and that's going to happen to you on the exam. You are going to probably have a moment. Yes. Where you're just like, I know this. And you're going to be frustrated because you're going to look at the screen. You're going to be almost like yelling at the screen. Like, I know this. Why can't I remember which one? And if, and if this, and you raise your fist to the sky. Right? And if this eludes you, we'll be talking about it tomorrow. During the series class. <laughs> there you go. All right. D yield to call C yield to maturity B yield to worst a nominal yield. Can I cross? We talked yield? about yield to worst. We talked about yeah. that once. We did talk about that. Can I, can I cross off all the yields? I think we could do that. I think it's fair to say that all of them are. Yeah. Plus I think people get caught up on that. They do. They do. Uh, we got maturity. What does maturity say? What do we know about maturity? It gets better. I mean, it's true. <laughs> gets better. Gets better with it. I like that. Uh, what about worse? No, that's right. The end of something. Yes, it is also the end. Hey, I like to consider myself very mature. No, it's, I'm just kidding. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, something to call. Uh, what about call? What about call? What do we know about calling? We call when it's up. We do call when it's up. When the market's up, we call. That's true. Uh, take back. We have something to talk awesome. about. Take I like back. to I like to call people when things are going well. Yeah. So we're, so almost like yield to call makes you happy. Yeah. Right. Yield to worse though. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's like the like you might the get a text. <laughs> you might get an email from me. I'm gonna email you. <laughs> Postage this case. Uh, probably not good. Right. I yield to the worst. <laughs> I'll send you a letter and how, how it's going. Right. Uh, so it's not happy. I'm not right? giving a call. And then nominal doesn't uh, Jamie put it in the chat. Nominal sounds like it's kind of normal. It's like nominal. Yeah. Um, it's mid. It's supposed to be what's going. It's supposed to happen. Right. It's normal. I planted X amount. I was supposed to yield X amount. I got X amount. Right. Now, does this does this in anything that I wrote in purple sound like anything that we studied? No, I actually no. And that was the whole point of this exercise. Exactly. Go for it. An investor who wants to know the minimum possible yield that he could receive on his investment should be considered concerned with which of the following words in the question, words in the question, words in the question, words in the question, minimum yeah. possible. There you go. Minimum possible. And just for bonus the word concerned, right? Because I'm not going to be concerned if it's normal. I'm not going to be concerned if it gets better. And I'm not going to be concerned if it's up or makes me happy because we said take back, right? We're only going to be concerned if it's the worst case. Yeah, that gets my attention real quick. Boom. Did we need to know that we've never seen that before in our quizzes? No. No, just common sense. Yes. Minimum possible. And I'd be very concerned if I heard something worst. Dude, can you imagine? Uh, I'm going to quote you on a yield to worst basis. <laughs> what? So the war. <laughs> <laughs> We're not expecting much. What can I tell you? Here, we don't have high expectations. We don't have a lot of expectations. Did I hear? Did I tell you about the care facility we have down the road? It's called No Care. <laughs> no Care is care right. next to the worst yield. Here farm. at no no care, we quote you at yield to worse. What a town! Worst yield farm and the worst care <laughs> and no care care. <laughs> all right, everybody. I hope you had fun with this, as you should with all your studying. Have fun with it. Break it up. Don't always get yourself so so immersed in the content that you forget that you know other words too. Correct. The questions are there. The answers are there. Don't overcomplicate it at all. It's all there. Yeah, it's absolutely. All there. Hey, did you guys know that the answer is there? You just got to pick it. Yes. The answer's on the screen, man. Exactly. You just got to pick it. Exactly. Don't talk yourself out of a right answer. Don't talk, don't talk yourself out. Hey. All right, everybody. Well, we'll have the we'll have those live sessions tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow night for Test Taking Techniques Tuesday. Same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, everybody, have a great night. 
and make sure to wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your friend's face. That's all I know. And keep that positive mental attitude. PMA, everybody have a great night. Guys, Oop, thank you. Little, little, uh, was that dyslexia? Yes. <laughs> I was like, what? Guys, thank you so much for being on. We super appreciate you. Don't forget to take that quick quiz, practice the Kona catchphrase, and we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Have a good one.